welcome to another week in our garden now I'm starting this week at the bottom of the garden I don't know if you remember but we had this frame for the butternut squashes last year this year we're putting the butternut squashes onto the main frame so on this frame I'm going to put the sweet peas I've put the top on it Last year we had it as a triangle, this year we've got it as an arch. I've planted this side up ready. I've had to put some wire around it to keep the pigeons off, but they'll annihilate the peas. I've just got this side to finish planting now. I have watered it because I started it some time ago. The sweet peas have done rather well, as you can see. They've outgrown the little sticks I've put on, so really do need planting, so we'll get them done. I'm using the bulb planter for ease, and then I haven't got to dig big holes in the soil. So there's only three to go in, so it'll be one, two, three, I think. It is quite wet now, I'm getting to good watering. Oh. Let's make three holes and then we'll do it waggly to back to it. And then these should be well rooted now. There you are, look, they really are ready for planting. We've held them off a little because of the uh, cold weather that we had. Now I'll make a little bit bigger hole by pushing the like that you see and then the hole's bigger for it and then in it goes keep them up as much as possible because if they drag on the ground they won't grow so quick that's it now we did stop these just before i brought them out and hardened, and hardened them up so all these bits that you see are actually side shoots should so they should flower quite well. Same again look. And then one more. This one's not so quite so big as the others look. But that's fine. Put them on a slant inwards. And then what I do, I just get the trowel and I'll mount this soil up against them. Just to hold them in place. And then just bank it up against the peas, it's, they'll do a lot better for it. Yeah. And then we'll put this little bit of wire around it to keep the pigeons off. It's just to stop them coming to it, I still come to and they'll peck. So we just put that there, it's only there temporary but we'll put a couple of canes in just to hold it stop it flopping about us, a bit of wind it will blow down there you are and just push that in it just holds it a little I'll put another cane there That's the sweet peas planted on the arch. They should grow up quite well and they'll look rather pretty I think once they're up. That's the, uh, the arch in situ now with the sweet peas on. Keep it well watered, a little bit of feed to get them into flower and hopefully they'll get to the top and it'll look picture that one. Now the rhubarb will pick that tomorrow. I've got everybody warned that they're getting some, so they're all looking forward to it. But in the meantime, we have some celery to plant and some beetroot that the granddaughters have sent, so we'll go and do that. 
Now we're at the tunnels. It's a beautiful day. Birds are singing beautiful today. Now the celery we're putting in, I've got one green and one red stalk. There's not a lot of difference while they're young, but obviously when they get older, we'll have one red, one green. I'm planting them all together in the tunnel at this end and at the other end I should put the celery out which is not quite ready yet but we'll put the celery in. I have started putting some in as you can see I've just got six more to put in the line here and then we'll have to keep it well watered to keep it growing on. It has been manured well deep down this bed so there's lots of manure and moisture down there so the roots will go down and pick the goodness up. Uh, I'm going to plant them with a bulb planter for ease. These are only in 9 centimeter liners so this makes a, a good job of making hole. They're all about a foot apart which is about the length of the bulb planter. So it's just a case of marking and then keeping the line straight and popping it in. Look. We'll mark all six and then we'll put them in, okay? Not too deep because the the only line is. And if you do that one, about there and there, oops. There you go. Bit of good ground this is been well well prepared. So we'll go about there, look. Just break it up a little. And now uh, there is. That's about it. Right, let's put these in. As you can see, there's a little tiny bit of red becoming on this one, so these are the red stalks. Well rooted, nice plants, they're ready to get in. Now they are a little bit frost tender celery but our this is our last day of the frost today so as, as from today we shouldn't get any more. So they'll be quite alright. We've got that lovely celery smell and it. it's nice. In they go. Not too firm, not as firm as the brassicas but Firmish, okay, there's its proper name. It's called celery red stalk. And that in there, it does make life a lot easier when you use the bulb planter. Two more then, let's get them in and then we'll get this tunnel put down. But we'll have to give them a really good watering. Um, one more there, I think, and there, so slightly this way. That one's a little bit that way, but it doesn't matter. But just to keep it in line, I will make that all different. There you go. Plenty dry these are, they've been stood a while. In they go. I'll just top this hole up a little because it's a little bit deep. There we are, it's nice and wet. They do like a lot of water celery so be prepared to water them. Daily if possible while there's no rain about. And they'll grow well. Now that's 30 of the celery in. That should be enough to last us through the summer. I will now just nip and get another can of water just for those we put in, okay? Quite a big rose on this can, but you need, you'll need it when you're giving celery because it will need a lot of water.
Anyway. Right, these are the beetroot. I potted them on and grown them on a little. Notoriously bad to take out the trays and plant, but we'll just take a time and get them in. Now, the ones I've planted are bolt hardy. I've planted them directly into cell trays, but I've put them in groups and I will actually transfer them in groups. I won't thin them down and then take them as they get a little bit small we'll take them at golf ball size but these for the girls we shall space out and do it properly for them there you are look it's a nice little plant notoriously bad to transplant so you have to be so careful with them And in we go. Clean as we go. Try and get the soil up around them, then when you water them, the soil will settle and hold them tight. So I'll get this tray done and then I'll come back to you. That's Gemma and the girls coloured beetroot all in. Taken the cover off the broad beans. And I'm going now going to pop the cover onto these beetroot because the birds will totally annihilate them. Right that's the artist now on. Brian's going to give me a hand now to put the net on but I have left enough room for two rows of bolt hardy in there as well. That's the more nice and safe under the net just now to give them a drink and let them settle for the day. That's it, a nice big watering camp. Now that'll be it for today and we'll see you tomorrow when we pull the rhubarb. Okay, bye. Hello and good afternoon. Beautiful sunny day again, not a cloud in the sky. Now right down at the bottom we're going to harvest the rhubarb. Now we're taking the rhubarb, now the Last week or so we've had quite a lot of rain which has made the plant turrid and if we have a long hot sunny spell as we've got now they will tend to fall down so it's best to get the crop off while they're nice tall like these are and turrid and then it won't need so much water from the existing soil to grow on again. As you can see it's grown quite big and it's absolutely stood proud so now's the time to get in there and get these pulled out right so it's the normal way of pulling the rhubarb we call it pulling it's actually picking but it's pulling put one hand near the bottom the other top and then pull away okay let's see how we go we'll have to fight our way in by pulling some out okay there you go look looking for a nice mostly red stalk now if when you're pulling it off it snaps off here do try to try your best to go back and break that short piece off else it'll rot back and rot the root a bit and what I should do then same as always I once I've pulled it I leave this because you can clean that off up at the house and then I come back from the leaf about an inch and then cut that off okay like that and that's what we're after a nice stick of rhubarb now what i should do i should pull quite a few and then show you what we've pulled that's the rhubarb picked i'll show you in a moment how much we've got just remember when you're picking it it's when you finish just go round and take 
all the yellow leaves out and as much of the mess at the bottom as you can it's almost impossible to get it all out but take out what you can and then it avoids having the slugs etc all crawling about the bottom here's what's left now as you can see it looks a bit flat but give it a few hours and probably a drink of water and it'll all be stood up again and still growing now here's the rhubarb that we've harvested today this is actually the second pick but this will be the main pick obviously there will be one more pick later in the middle to the end of June and then that'll be it for us right now we'll pop this up to the house and get it somewhere cool it doesn't want to be sat by in the sun and we'll divide it up to who's having what I think Jamie's having a lot and then later in the week I'm putting together a little tunnel if you like with those small hoops so I can put some salads in it hello and good afternoon we're a bit later in the day today it's been raining most of the morning it's absolutely wonderful it's helping to wash in those nematodes it saves me watering so I'm well pleased with that now I told you I'd pop and show you how I was going to put the neck cover on for the salad crops obviously the salad crops that are in the tunnels as the cabbages fill up there'll be no room for those so we need another cover putting out to put the salad crops in in the summer now I was going to put it on the hoops but it didn't look right and it wouldn't sit properly so what I've done I've put put it on wires from one frame to the other and just put a J bolt on to tension it a little so this is how we finished up doing it in the end it's not a lot of tension on it but just enough to hold the net I couldn't put a double net on it was too much weight on on the wires that would do nicely to raise us some nice salads in the summer I just had to remember to keep watering it now we'll just show you the progress on the beans and the peas which are now in the tunnel hardening up ready to plant next week and I'll show you the timber that I've got ready to build the frame these are the beans and peas that we grew in the root trainers as you can see they're really ready now for getting in the ground so we'll plant these next week when they've had a good week to harden up now the beetroot that the girl sent is now standing well seems to have all taken and here is your product label that came with it just see how many colours we get now while we had a little drop of rain this morning not an awful lot but it was over a long period so I nipped to the timber yard and fetched the lats to make the pea and bean support that will go onto these two plots here there they are they come in packs of eight and they're strong enough it's well tantalized and they're well strong enough to take those beans and peas for oh, two or three seasons there now that'll be another job that I shall have to get done probably over the weekend although tomorrow I want to spend on the greenhouse site so it might be Monday before I get to it but that'll be fine it won't take much building we got all the nets from last year so it's just a case of finding them and then we'll put the nets on and we'll plant those up next week for you now that'll be about it for this week it's a lovely warm day although it is overcast it's real good growing weather this is so as I say that'll be it for this week many many thanks for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week with the beans and peas okay bye now